Gdzie jest? Good evening everyone. Um, I'm welcoming you and I'm glad that at least some people made it, even it's Friday night and this presentation is in English. Um, <laughs> but I'm e even more glad that Fernando made all his way from Brasilia to here. He's probably one of the best um, speakers we could um, convince coming here for this speech tonight. Um, he made his PhD, two PhDs actually. Right? No, no, one PhD and the doctor, the doctor in ah, science. Okay, so we're, we're two levels in the old Soviet Union. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, um, yeah, he made his PhD and studied in the Soviet Union. And later he was um, for a long time. Um, working um, at the University of Havana in Cuba, where he made it, you can say, a hub for critical psychologies in Latin America. And now, since I guess 15 years, right? More yeah, 20. 20 years, he is a um, professor at um, the Central University in Brasilia in Brazil. Um, yeah, where he's working with his team on his own specific critical subjectivity concept and yeah after had two very interesting talks he gave on um, his own subjectivity concept and um, today about um, how he sees Soviet psychology has recepted Marx and how Holzkamp tradition in psychology recepted it in comparison tonight um, he will present what what kind of critical psychologist traditions there are, there used to be and there still are in um, Latin America and how you can compare them to um, the German critical psychology, which um, as well makes him a very special person because he um, knows a bit of the Holzkamp tradition, which is not that common in outside of the German speaking countries. So. I'm very happy you're here tonight. <laughs> Thank you. And he will give his speech and afterwards um, we make a discussion. I will collect the questions and he will answer them in a collective way. Yes, I, I would like to everyone, thank you Daniel for your introduction and for your invitation. And especially I want to sense the people who were uh, with me today in the morning, and the people who were with me today in the morning and yesterday deserve a medal. Then thank you so much for your attention, for the interactive discussion that we have uh, in, this, in these two days. Uh, really, uh, this is interesting. I, I told Daniel because I, I got surprised when I see that it was my plenary session because my strong point at this moment is the development of the topic of subjectivity from a cultural historical standpoint, but that it is very in, in very close relation to the relevance that subjectivity is taking in critical psychology in general, but in the more current authors. Even today, I was talking about the relevance of the concept of conduct of everyday life for advancing a new reflection on subjectivity departing from uh, the point of view of Horstens. But one point that I would like to, from which I want to begin my discussion, is that I perceive in the informal conversation that practically everyone referred to only one critical psychology is the German Holzkamp critical psychology that, without any doubt, was an important step forward in relation to critical positions in psychology that had a systemic implication because one strong point of Holzkamp was to interrelate theory, epistemology, and methodology. We have against, we, we can criticize some of these positions, but if the attempt to make a, a broad representation in the intellectual production in psychology, really in the 60s, was something incredible. Of course, 
there, other examples, uh, Vygotsky, that was very contradictory, Sinker, but I will not enter in this, because one point I would like to discuss in the, first, in the beginning of my explanation, exposition, is what is critical psychology? It is possible to keep the attribute of critical psychology to one position forever, I think that it is impossible because, in my opinion, any critical psychology, like any important theory, are living processes and has historical character and deserve the attention to the new path that is possible to open on the basis on the founders. Uh, I think that uh, in Latin America is the, the point I want to raise today because I perceive that practically no one knows the authors I will mention today in which I will include myself because I was part of the second movement, the, the, movement, the movement of the 80s. I seem older because I do, when I was in the Angola war, I have a biography that it is not the same that maybe you have. But anyway, I look older than my real age, but I will not say the age. <laughs> it is interesting because both Holzken, critical psychology, and the first critical movement in Latin America appeared in two points that war was sharp point of the Cold Wars during the 60s. The first one was Germany, the confrontation between East and West, and the confrontation be between state socialism and capitalism that was all the time in a fine equilibrium that from the Caribbean we thought that will explode the First World War here in this point. And curiously, the second critical movement in Latin America was also uh, emerged in the 60s, when Cuban Revolution really transformed the political uh, picture in all Latin America. But the mo most curious thing is that the first movement in Latin America appeared within psychoanalysis in Argentina. Uh, it has its explanation. The more important, the more brilliant figures of that movement were Jose Blecher and Pichon Rivier from a theoretical point of view, because as I will uh, extend a little later, the movement also gained a very political sense in the confrontation with the structural capitalist order in Argentina in that moment. Argentina in that moment was the, the first, the more development country in Latin America. The second one was Cuba. It is a very interesting fact because Cuba had uh, in many, in many uh, indicators the first place in Latin America, but Argentina gained it from us in other indicators. But for example, in that time we had more rails of train in Cuba than in Spain. You know, the child mortality was less than in Spain in the 50s. And it's interesting because it, it was one of the reasons of the Cuban revolution. A level of development, of development and very uh, interesting and uh, confront uh, very interesting and subversive intellectual group from which emerged Fidel Castro as leader of the revolution, and of course a social subjectivity in which we as Cuban always felt humiliated by the power of the United States. Today is on the contrary. After 60, 60 years of government, we have more admiration to the United States that uh, the admiration were uh, 60 years bef before. It's a point that we can to discuss. I have read in these days a very interesting Mar Marxist philosopher and writer, German, 
uh, Wolfgang Haupt. Ah, yes. You seem fantastic, but I read uh, thanks to the person who put free one little book that <laughs> really, ah, I appreciate Sasha very much. Thank you. Uh, and what Cuba, in the, the, the moment of the revolution, was a very impacting moment in all the countries of Latin America. And the Cuban way of getting power, it means the guerrillas in English is guerrillas. guerrillas. It's okay, guerrillas, guerrillas in Espanol, guerrillas, was, was extended all over America, where guerrillas in Argentina, in Brazil, but mainly in Central America, where there were two revolutionary movements that even were stronger by the uh, potential uh, of fire than Cuban was. It was uh, Nicaragua that also the revolution was possible and the group with the Sandinism come to the power and unfortunately has perverted, has been a perversion of the power because centrality of power, I think that is an obsession of human subjectivity and is terrible for keeping any ideological, any revolutionary project uh, alive. And uh, that situation implies that a group of psycho, oh, excuse me, I return to the point. In this sixties, the, Argentine, the Argentinian intellectual movement was the stronger one in Latin America. Blecher, Jose Blecher, was militant of the Communist Party and was member of the, Argentina, the Argentinian Psychological Association. He was expulsed from two organizations. He was expulsed from the party and he was expulsed from the Argentinian Psychological Organization. I, I think that the stress that he was submitted by entering confrontation with two theoretical frameworks that he loved, it was the cause that he uh, uh, died with 50 years, possibly. Now, in order to have you a, a possible representation on, on what that movement was in that moment, I would like, to, I, I brought some uh, quotations from Pichon Riviere and Jose Blecher. Yes. To, uh, today, one young people who is there suggested a very good didactic procedure that is Daniel Reed. Daniel is my most younger, my younger collaborator, is the younger uh, uh, individual of my group, and my wife, that is an also a senior professor is my, the co-founder of, of our line of research, and Daniel is supporting me because his English is from Manchester. Oh, no. I, belong, I belong from a Cuban generation that the second language was the Russian one. Then you excuse my phonetic, and I try to avoid my phonetic when a chance open it. <laughs> Read, please, Daniel. <laughs> After that, I will comment. first quotation. The social psychology that we defend has its focus in the study of the dialectical relation between social organization and the subject's unconscious fantasy. In other words, the relation between the social structure and the configuration of the subject's internal world, relations that are studied through the concept of the personal link. The subject is not only a relational one, but a produced subject. Very far from Manchester English. Yeah. Yes, thank you, Daniel. It is really incredible in that time, in the beginning of the 60s, uh, because the quotation is taken from a book of 1987, but the original one was 1964, okay? And in that moment, within the psychoanalysis movement, was incredible this level of criticism. Really, he was defended, not a psychoanalysis, a new psychology departing from psychoanalysis. And it is a very interesting point that they, uh, he shared with Joseph um, Leher, the other one. 
This is Blecher. Okay. Also was from the 1967 or 68, this quotation. So following a very similar position, Blecher stated, Freud from the beginning assumed a completely different position, as a result of which he studied the symptom in relation to the life of the sick person. This difference is in relation to the formal way used by psychology in the study of the psychological functions, separating them from the, vi from the vital course of life. However, information coming only from outside about all the events of life cannot give the meaning and the understanding of the symptom. This comprehension is only possible when the facts are put together as they are subjectively, subjectively lived, felt by the sick person, which permits the explanation of the symptom in terms of its function and as part of human behavior. It is this way of defining human behavior that I call dramatic. It means, in the end, that the description, comprehension and explanation of behavior based on patient's life as a moment of the whole of all his or her behavior. You know how one followed the line of the first is the social organization, the material from which is organized human psyche. However, it is not an, a mechanic internalization from the external to the internal. It's a subjective production that passes through fantasy through imagination, but he break down, broke down in that time with the sexualism, reductionism of Freud theory. They both have to explain how the organization of human mind or of subjectivity, because there are important layers, if, for example, uh, to the position of subjectivity that I have I have defended it in this day, and you can to find point of contact with Hawkins' approach to the subjectivity. And even in some points are more advanced because, uh, as I say today, for me, the more promissory concept of Hawkins' related subjectivity was the, con the conduct of everyday life. When Hawkins relate subjectivity with control, and with conscious control, I, I seen that is reduced the opportunity for the concept for explaining many, many very complex dynamics that characterize human subjectivity. And here you know how he combined the concrete situation of life within which the symptoms, the illness, or the life emerge and psychological is organized with the subjective processes through which this life is organized in each individual. And in the case of both of them, not only individuals, both uh, stress the relevance of social organization. Okay, then it's the other one. Uh, on the basis of the uh, theoretical position, uh, uh, several uh, Argentinian psychologists separated from the Argentinian Psychoanalytic uh, Association and create a political group named to questions. And that political group was even sharper than Blecher and Pichon in, his, in its social political critics. Mary Langer, who was uh, born in Austria, but passed most, most of his li her life in Argentina, in Argentina, stated in that document that was the platform of the theoretical movement called to question. In synthesis, psychoanalytic interpretation can complement our sociological and political understanding but it would lose completely its meaning entirely if instead we assume it in an isolated way, integrating its practices and knowledge as part of the social structure that Marx made intelligible. It is uh, very interesting because this movement was not the Freud Marxism that was before this movement in Europe that was 
after the movement in Latin America. Really, they, they were in the path to advance a different psychological system that late, late in my opinion, uh, later have to conduct to another kind of psychological system. Even I look at these positions, important premises to the topic of subjectivity, on which I did not speak in my first presentation because I will speak today. And there have been people who has been pres present in the three occasions. But it is very important the way that they assume Mars not in the intention to mix my uh, Mars and Freud, but in the intention to review the basic postul theoretical postulate of psychoanalysis. It, for me, is really very interesting. And, but, unfortunately, that movement was aborted because was the military coup in Argentina at the end of the 60s. And most of these psychologists has to go to the, to the exile. And as always happened in Latin America, and it's, it is one difference with the tradition of Hork and Sinsky, thinking, in Latin America, after this moment of rupture with the mainstream of psychology, they don't have continuity, continuity. You know, there, for example, after the military coup, the, Lacan, the Lacanian, uh, Jacques uh, Elaine Miller, uh, and Judith, the daughter of Lacan, invaded Argentina. And with this, I cannot say that Lacanian are a reactionary movement. For this reason, I began, and I will position myself in relation of what is a critical psychology. But Lacanian, in the case of Argentina, was a very conservative and really a terrible movement that uh, banned from the intellectual Argentinian scenario the own roots of a movement that was very promissory in terms of advancing a new representation of, of human psyche. In my opinion, I prefer to use the term subjectivity. Okay? Yeah, I, I say that unlike Horskan, because fortunately, uh, here in German, in German and all the German, in Denmark, in Europe in general, the legacy of Holocaust is alive and is in development. It's a very important point. Uh, no, you can. Now I will refer this movement uh, last, lasted four years. In four years, they published, they published a lot of books, papers, and create a sort of subversive climate within the psychoanalytic association. After that, even in Latin America, non one, or not that non one, but Blecher and Pichon Rivier and the participants in that movement practically never are teaching in the universities. It's something incredible. Eh? Never. And many Latin American psychologists, you ask it, who is Pichon Rivier, and they don't know. It is part of the colonized mind, unfortunately. The second movement was not so strongly theoretically and from epistemological point of view, but was very interesting because it was very spontaneous and heterodox movement. In the second movement participate psychologists from practically all over the countries in Latin America. But the leader of that movement was Ignacio Martin Baró, that uh, some of you have known about, about him. And uh, really, he uh, was an Spanish psychologist, but who lived in the Salvador and the time of the guerrillas. And he was Jesuits. 
It's sweet. It's okay. It's understandable. Yes, sweet. And as the sweet, the sweet in the Salvador were one of the stronger force to support the guerrilla movement in that country. As a result of that, Martin Baró was murdered in 1989. The movement, that critical social psychological movement that really defined itself in such a way, critical Latin American psychological, psych, uh, uh, social psychology, really organized in the 20 Inter-American Congress that hold in Caracas, Venezuela. It was very interesting because one problem that we as Latin American psychologists always are affected by is the lack of economic resources for advancing projects. But in that case, in that moment, the oil in Venezuela was in the higher level and the Central University of Caracas was the economical sponsor of that movement. Then participated people from Cuba, included me, Martin Baró. Even Martin Baró made my presentation in the keynote speaker uh, conference in, in that Congress. And psychologists from Mexico, from Yunnan, from Guadalajara, Silvia Line from, from Brazil, that is still today is a very important reference in the Brazilian uh, psychological critical positions. From Chile, are from practically all over the country. Was curious because Nicaragua has a very low level of psychology. And even how in the revolution, there were not psychologists from Nicaragua integrated this movement. This movement have in the, in the person of Martin Baró very similarities with Holkans. First, even when Martin Baró was a political activist, he said always, political phraseology does not help in making social change. Revolution, it is not the only way. We have to work every day in making social changes. This is the position of critical psychology. Martin Barros said at the moment. I remember that in that moment, I participate in the movement through my concept of personality and subject that I began from my uh, times of Soviet doctoral and postdoctoral student, but I still had not advanced on the topic of subjectivity. That my presence in the movement helped me so much to understand that it is impossible to think about personality without the chance to integrate the multiple social, symbolical construction and social processes in the singular past through which personality emerged in individuals. And that we have to create a conception of subjectivity that combines social subjectivity and individual subjectivity. Subjectivity in our position is not an internal psychological structure. No, no, it's a new ontological definition. But of, of course, this is my arena, and I always train to, to talk something about this. But the interesting point was that I participated from my concept my, uh, of Soviet psychology. Uh, Martin Baró was the leader. He formed in one American university, but in that moment he kept a very interesting dialogue with Fischer as Foucault, as Pierce, and he has a really white, white culture. And Maritza Montero, for example, who was one of Venezuelan psychologists who participate in the movement, was one of the founder of the communitarian psychology in Latin America, because communitarian psychology was part of this critical movement. And then we, for example, the first book about political psychology was published in 19, 
89 as a result of the meeting, confrontation, visit to each other to different countries, and practically everything was paid in that moment with, by our colleagues, Venezuelan. And uh, for example, it's necessary, necessary to mention here uh, Jose Miguel Salazar, who was a positivistic psychologist in a very traditional way, was, was a very subversive in relation to the identity in our countries. And he had, through his methodology, very interesting words that put in evidence how, for example, John from Venezuela wanted in those years to be American, not to be Venezuela, Venezuelan. And the, the plurality of wars and of theoretical basis on which this movement was developed but was really impressive. And the more impressive point was that one contributed to the development of the others. But uh, Martin Baró also had one point of contact with Holkans. The importance of the individuals for the social psychology, that it is impossible to discuss social problems without considering individuals and as important elements of the social network. And precisely it was Martin Baró who more evaluated my work about personality. He said, I seen that a critical psychology have to use all the device that has been historically used by psychology, but with a complete different, different way, in complete different way, and through complete different meanings. We have to create a psychology that could be expressed in epistemological challenge and a new methodologies of working with population. It was very interesting because Martin Baró was inserted within the communities in the Salvador. That movement lasted four years, began in 90, uh, 1985, and really after the die, the, the die of Martin Baró, that was uh, together with other elements, the oil in Venezuela, if it began to, 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 to fall, and the structure of Venezuelan society increased uh, their contradiction and was impossible for Venezuela to continue to sponsor economically our meetings. And this was one fa two facts, the death of Martin Baró, the crisis in Venezuela, and the third ones, and once again, what I want to refer to what is a critical psychology was the entrance of social constructionism in Latin America and becoming a fashion of critical psychologies. It was incredible. And everyone wanted to be social constructionists. No one follow or remember this group created by this group in critical social psychology and I remember that my first critic to social constructionism were precisely in the late of the 90s. But social constructionism, that without any doubt was a critical psychology, eh, was a bad element in Latin America because it replaced the unoriginal position and was taken as a fashion. And it is nothing more damaging in science that to become fashion. Everyone wants to speak that language and critical position completely disappears. Fortunately, social constructionism is in decline at this moment and once again, many different theoretical positions are emerging. One of them is the followers of Holzkamp, this group here in Germany. I. Uh, it's okay for, for beginning this, a discussion. Uh, finally, I want to say, it because in many informal conversations during these days, people have asked me, what is a critical psychology for you? I said, in the first place, a good psychology. And in the second place, a psychology that generated 
different, not only theoretical position, different epistemological and methodological change that be capable to accompany this, uh, the theoretical movement. And through this, this kind of psychology always will have an impact in different areas of social life. Not always the political change, as, as a big a macro political change is possible, but many changes can be done, for example, in educational policies, in health uh, policies, in the work with the people with low level of income, and many things can be done. It was one principle of Martin Baró. In that moment, I was very red, very, I suppose that Cuba was in the past of a new future for our country and for Latin America. I was grown. Cuba passed by the same process. The group in the power, after being a child revolutionary, become very conservative and was centered in the power more than advancing a national program. I think that is now for today. Many of you is are the first time meet me. I, I, I am seeing other people, known faces, that are keeping in, in our space for discussing. I really appreciate you are a welcome to, to us. Because Latin American and German are to different, uh, to different wars. We have, for example, I say these days to my young friends here, that Holzkamp is little known in Latin America, little known. There are little groups that are inter interested in, in Holzkamp, but uh, when you discover Holzkamp, you find many similarities with not only the, the Latin American movement, I don't want to, to say it about this now, but our uh, line about subjectivity is also a critical position that strongly advanced in that moment in different places, not only in Latin American, but fortunately in Anglo-Saxon uh, language. Yes, for this reason, we will give you some materials because maybe you want to, to enter in contact with our work and we promise to younger, to young organ, organizers to send our last publication in English. This kind of meetings are very important, but not only at the meeting, because these meetings are realized every two years, but we have to find the way in which the different topic that the summer school developed can people who are interested in this topic and to create networks for keeping in contact with the person who have invited as key uh, as, uh, as lectures and to have the opportunity even to make more informal meeting through Skype and so on. Because we have a team there in Brazil in which are many doctoral and postdoctoral students that are in the same age that you and that our other friends and uh, most of you. I remember when I was one of the younger in the auditorium and now I always are I'm one of the older. <laughs> but please, now I open the comments and questions and problems that you want to raise on the basis of what, on what I say today. Okay, it's my second presentation today. I have to confess to you that I am tired because it's, it's not in Spanish. But anyway, it's a way to improve my English <laughs> and to be in contact with otherness and through my dis this discussion that has been very interesting discussion. Thank you very much.